So in this video, we'll talk a little bit more about how to format and comment out our notebook better and use some imagery and uh, markdowns around that imagery. We will learn about plotting in Python later uh, in this class on f week f five. But if you bear with me here, and uh, please do not worry if you don't understand the code, I would like to show you how an image is generated inside the notebook in a code cell and how we can use markdowns around it to explain that cell. So I'll go to my notebook. You see that last line. If, you're not, if you click on it and if you're not sure if it's a markdown or a code, we already see in here indicating it's a code, but you can also check it simply uh, through this markdown um, dropdown uh, in your toolbar. So here, I'm just going to use a simple uh, matplotlib function called plot. I need to import some of that. And it says basically import pyplot um, and um, plot function. And um, we'll use to that plot function to just plot out um, a vector. 0, 1, 0, 1, four values in it. If I say shift run here, I'll see uh, the graph being generated. So again, we had four values, 0, 1, 0, 1. We just plotted that out using a simple matplotlib function. We'll see more of that uh, to how we, how we use uh, matplotlib uh, to create visualizations and things like that uh, later in this course. So now maybe I want to explain this graph. How would I do that? I'll go to the, click on the cell, the code cell under it, and I'll convert that to a markdown. I can simply write, this is a uh, plot using matplotlib um, of a vector. Okay, that's it. I'll just run this one. So I can see that my text actually is right under that graph and explaining that graph further. Let's go a little bit up in our notebook. Again, uh, to do that, I'll just use escape. And I'll use my up and down arrows to move between cells. I want to go back to that first question we calculated. How many seconds are there in a leap year? This is just code. And above it, I'd like to add a line of text using markdowns to explain what that code was for or what I'm trying to do there. So I'll go to the cell above that cell, which says in 8 here. I'll go to that in 2 cell. And I'll go to my toolbar and click Add. Here I can click on the new cell that I added, convert that to a markdown, and say um, below is how we calculate the number of seconds in a leap year. So if we run this, uh, we could see that we are nicely documenting. And I'll just, I haven't changed much, but I'll just keep uh, running through the notebook to see how we can uh, run everything in it uh, using Shift Enter one by one. It puts us to the next line at each time. So now we are done with our notebook. Um, we need to save it. Of course, uh, the, the notebook actually application saves checkpoints as you're typing. But if you want to make sure, um, you can also just say save or use that save button. And you'll see that the checkpoint was created here when I use the checkpointing. So if I want to go to that version of the notebook at that check button, uh, checkpoint, I can go and uh, click on that uh, later on. So let's now close our browser tab. We are done with our notebook. We saved it. And uh, let's now close the browser tab and go to our dashboard. On our dashboard, we see that green notebook right next to our notebook file. And it says it's running. So although we closed it, the kernel that's running the notebook is still running. Um, so since it's running, we can just click and open it um, easily. So now if we want to make sure uh, the kernel is not running once we close our notebook, uh, maybe we won't be working it, with it uh, in the near term and we want to make sure everything is nicely saved and closed, um, we can go to File 
And there, we can say close and halt. So when we go back to our dashboard now, after closing it, we'll see that green notebook uh, turned to some grayish color, and the notebook is not running anymore. Of course, to run it, we just need to reopen the notebook. And remember, the kernel was closed. But when, when I look at this notebook overall, everything that I've done before persisted. So once it's run, it persists until I go and rerun the notebook. So if I share this with a collaborator, they'll be able to see my outputs. Uh, but then they can change it and re-execute it, or they can re-execute the same one by doing Shift-Enter. They can even do something like restart and run all under the kernel. So there are different run options um, for this kernel. Another thing I'd like to talk about is, let's say you did your analysis and you'd like to send it to your colleague. Um, they can, of course, view your analysis if, as if it were a report, but also they can rerun it on their machine or modify the notebook easily. What if uh, you really would like to save a non-executable version of the notebook and uh, keep it in your archives? Uh, we can do that by going to File menu option here. And you can download the notebook as a number of different formats. In this one, I'll do an HTML. So when I download this notebook that we just created as an HTML file, we'll see that the notebook looks like we would see it in the notebook application, but it's an HTML file without uh, any name on top and the toolbar on top, which is not editable. So we have a version of the notebook uh, that can be archived the way it is with your outputs uh, when you last ran that notebook. So it makes it also easier to keep a record of the results and persist them over time. Or if you have uh, collaborators who would just like to see not executable results, um, you can share uh, HTML files or PDFs uh, through the notebook interface. Um, with this, we'll end our Jupyter introduction. And in the rest of the course, we'll show you some other notebook features as we go through more um, sophisticated Python modules for data science. Hope you'll enjoy the notebooks as much as we do, and follow along in all the notebooks we show you for different applications.